This is uh, the trip that Pope Francis made the first time that a pope has ever gone to Israel. And this is 2,500 years after God had spoken to the prophet and told him that uh, there was going to come a time when the world would be gathered together in a one universal religious program. And so this is Daniel, Daniel 9.27. And uh, Daniel 9.25 it was. And so in Daniel 9.25 and 27, Daniel uh, prophesied that right at the end times, it was coming seven years that would finish the plan that God had here for this planet. And that it was going to end with the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. John wrote uh, in John 14, he said, there's only one way, and he said, I am the way, the truth, and life. He didn't make no bones about it that there are many uh, false teachers, preachers, religious people that are going to come over the thousands of years. So, But he said, I am, I'm coming back, and I will visit the earth once again. Jesus promised that in John 14. I will return, he said. Here now we have Netanyahu, Perez, and Pope Francis are coming together with a military parade and are showing that uh, Pope Francis is now going to be looking forward to sitting in the new temple when it, it, it is constructed. Uh, the deed has been given to the Vatican from Israel back in 93, 1993, and uh, that piece of land is deeded there, and they're, they're planning on rebuilding the temple, and so it's very shortly to be accomplished. Some 40-some years, all the way back to Yasser Arafat in the early 70s, uh, they had many, many, many meetings between uh, the Palestinians and between Israel and the presidents and uh, the Vatican. So they've had uh, agreement there, and in 1993 they signed a contract where they would go ahead and give the land uh, to the Vatican, and the Vatican is going to sit there, and they're going to build a temple over the the, over the top of uh, David's sarcophagus, right off the Temple Mount there. So here we have uh, Perez, uh, the president, and we had Nehanyahu, that was just in the last picture there, and uh, also the Pope Francis. It looks like, unless something really radically changes, that that will be going into the control then of a new world order that brings the three religions together and brings also the rulers that deal with uh, the nations economically. That will include all of America, the United States, East and West, North and South. The whole planet is going to be under the New World Order and part of that religious part of the uh, plans that God had. So the prophecy goes back, begins in Daniel, and then finishes up in Revelation uh, 11, 1 and 2, all the way uh, the picture of the two witnesses that come in, uh, in Revelation 11. And here's Pope Francis uh, giving a salutary speech of peace uh, to the whole world. And uh, could this be uh, something that would be connected with, you know, Revelation 6, the man that comes in to rule over the whole world, the man of peace. And it says he's coming on a white horse. He has all white. The carriage is white. He's white. <laughs> Everything is, everybody else is in red, but he's in white. And so he represents peace. He represents uh, bringing all the world together under the Vatican, the Catholic faith, uniting in one uh, triune uh, focus and head uh, to bring in this peaceful new world uh, plan for peace on earth. It kind of started uh, back uh, after Muhammad died and the Muslims then took over in 637 A.D. Omar was a strong... Arab religious leader, and he then uh, attempted to stay uh, to build the Muslim mosque, but they didn't actually start until 688 A.D. So they had the Crusades. You remember the story of the Crusades. Here we have the Pope, and then we have the High Priest uh, that would be connected to the synagogues of Israel, and then they're kissing, they're showing the, the gratitude of God to let them come and represent the religious order. But it's all under God. God runs the plan and he has it all prophetically in the old and the new and they have the story of uh, Christ coming and then the power of it is 
when Jesus, after they crucified him, uh, Paul writes, there was 500 that saw him on the top of Mount Bethany. And of course the book of Acts says that uh, they saw him. The angel said, well, what are you standing here? And he said, well, I'm, I'll be back. And so he, the angel spoke and, and then Paul said, yes, there was a, a large group of people. 500 of them saw him go up and through the air. That's one of the miracles that a lot of times we just kind of ignore, but that's a powerful thing that's impossible. Nobody can go up through the clouds like that, yet they said that he did. And they saw him alive after they had nailed him, and he lost 13 pints of blood. So here's a picture of that group now in Salutatory, and uh, here the, uh, the lining of the Jesuits of the New World Order, and uh, many things that, are, that have come together in a meeting to bring one unified world government. And so uh, we're thankful for the peace that God is using here. And remember Yahweh, the great God of the universe, brought his son Jesus, and Mother Mary had a child. And so those chromosomes for Jesus, the male ones, had to come some way. It didn't come from Mary. She didn't, you know, have any maleness in her. She's a female. And so God created a supernatural miracle, and the Virgin Mary was uh, overshadowed by the, by the Holy Spirit, and that which came from her is the Son of God. Jesus declared that he was the Messiah when he was giving out water to the woman that came to the well in John. And uh, so he said, she said, well, we're looking for the Messiah. And he said, well, you're looking at him. I that speak unto you am he, said he claimed to be the Messiah. Uh, he didn't deny that. And uh, the Pilate puts the signs in three languages. This is the Son of God and uh, the King of the Jews. So we're remarking that just quickly as we look at this historical document, the prophecy being fulfilled after 2,500 years, Daniel 9.27. God bless this video as it's being shown.